Exceptional highs, crushing lows. Boris Johnson with something special in British politics. A man whose story gripped the country and could never be ignored. Boris Johnson was never a child to be carried along by life's tides. Instead, he would use it to propel him to his destination. Knowing he wanted to be world king aged eight. Knowing he had a knack for being lucky, but trouble never far behind. I'm apologising, obviously, for all the offence I've caused and for any hurt uh, that people feel. A graduate trainee on The Times, but sacked for misrepresentation. Brussels correspondent of The Telegraph. But were the stories always completely true? By the time he reached the editor's chair of The Spectator, he was a big enough figure to breeze through challenges that would have stymied lesser men and women. Combining magazine editor with MP for Henley in 2001. And they do. Ah, oh, Boris Johnson has been elected uh, uh, in Henley. <laughs> His political career stalled briefly rather than stopped after being sacked as a shadow junior minister for lying about an affair. It was because of, rather than in spite of, that rumbunctious reputation that he won the mayoralty in Labour London. I therefore officially declare Boris Johnson to be elected as the next mayor of London. The Heineken politician for reaching those outer London suburbs in numbers that other Tories couldn't. Boris Johnson, the mayor of London with the Olympic flag! Then he got a London berth, but a national platform in the form of the 2012 Olympics. Are we ready? Are we ready? Yes, we are! At his best, Boris Johnson was a politician who intuited moods, crowds, fears, and above all, hope. His career was all about proving doubters wrong. People are coming from around the world, and they're seeing us, and they're seeing the greatest city on earth, aren't they? Then, he was a politician speaking for the whole of the nation. But it wasn't until he picked a side that he put himself on the path to become Prime Minister. I don't think there's anything else I can do. I will be advocating uh, vote leave. That side was the campaign to leave the European Union. Boris Johnson got himself slogans, jokes and most of all, a prop. Folks, this is a once-in-a-lifetime, unrepeatable opportunity for us to take back control. It worked because he looked like he was having fun on the campaign trail. Sky News is projecting that the UK has voted out. It was a stunning victory against an establishment to remain, which started with every advantage, proving doubters wrong. Theresa May made him foreign secretary, only for him to resign two years later over her Brexit plan. Once more, picking a side to get ahead. At his most comfortable on the campaign trail, this time the goal was Downing Street and the path a no-frills Brexit. That Boris Johnson is elected as the leader of the Conservative and Unionist Party. His arrival looked like it had united a broken Tory party around a plan that then proved hard to deliver. The first five months were as turbulent as any seen by a modern Prime Minister. Not a good start, Thank Boris. You. As he sought a Brexit deal and then tried to pass it through the Commons. His breakthrough was getting an election. <laughs> and winning an 80-strong majority again sent doubters packing. This, this morning I, I went to Buckingham Palace and I am forming a new government. It allowed Boris Johnson to finally deliver Brexit at the end of January 2020. But just as he got Brexit done, Boris Johnson had a new foe, more deadly than any he had faced before, on the other side of the globe, where coronavirus was starting to spread. Like everybody else, his attention was initially elsewhere. His instincts to shrug. I was at a hospital the other night where I think there were, a few, there were actually a few coronavirus uh, patients and I shook hands with everybody, uh, you'll be pleased to know. But it began to infect and take over the body politic until it could not be ignored. I must give the British people a very simple instruction. You must stay at home. And then it began to take over him. First of all, in my own 
case, uh, although I'm feeling better and I've done my, my seven days of isolation, alas, I still have uh, one of the symptoms. But after a stay in intensive care, he was back to face a yet bigger challenge steering the country through a global pandemic, which despite lockdowns and restrictions, just wouldn't let go. Almost a year into coronavirus, and he was still cancelling Christmas with six days to go. One man had been at Boris Johnson's side throughout the Leave campaign, the election and the pandemic. Dominic Cummings, a controversial figure. He picked fights with every part of what he saw as the Westminster establishment. And eventually... His boss was the target, walking out of number 10 and becoming one of Johnson's most vociferous critics. Through every difficult moment, Boris Johnson and his supporters would highlight two big achievements. First, there was the Brexit deal. He'd tell you he got Brexit done. Formally leaving the EU, then, almost a year later, cutting economic ties. Much of the trickiest work on trade in Northern Ireland still left to do, however. A true verdict on its success and failings can only be made in the decades to come. Second was the vaccination programme. First in the world to authorise it. First in the world to roll it out at speed. For many months, far faster than the EU. There were moments of personal celebration too. A Westminster wedding to his partner, Carrie. Honeymoon plans delayed. The problems were piling up. His health secretary, Matt Hancock, out after it emerged he was in a relationship with a taxpayer-funded colleague. Then Brexit supporter and political bedfellow Owen Paterson, guilty of lobbying while accepting cash, initially defended by Boris Johnson, then abandoned and also out. Then there were the problems piling up. Queues at petrol stations, shortages of lorry drivers, migrants crossing the channel, prices everywhere rising. The strange showing in front of business leaders. Forgive me. Forgive me. I don't know if you've been to Peppa Pig World. Who's been to Pads? I've been anyone who's been to Peppa Pig World. Not enough. And finally, it was the personal peccadilloes that really did for him and the word no politician wants to be associated with, sleaze. Who paid for the holidays in Mystique, or the donor-funded refurbishment of his flat above number 11? Then the Christmas parties in Downing Street during lockdown made the public wonder if this footage of his press secretary, Allegra Stratton, joking about parties was the Johnson administration laughing at them from the corridors of power. And it was not socially distanced. <laughs> But as the allegations grew and grew, Mr Johnson became trapped in a web of rule-breaking and half-truths and untruths of his own making. Nobody told me, uh, I can absolutely, I'm absolutely categorical about this, nobody said to me, this is an event that is against the rules, uh, that is in breach of uh, what we're asking everybody else to do, uh, should not go ahead. What I remember is going out into that garden for a, a short time. But the Metropolitan Police disagreed. And soon Partygate became a byword for bad behaviour, hypocrisy and a seeming contempt for the rules. Senior civil servant Sue Gray investigated but left the final judgement up to the Conservative Party and the public. Boris Johnson became the first Prime Minister to be found to have broken the law in office and fined. He tried to mount a damage limitation exercise to contain the uproar from the public and his MPs. But it wasn't enough to prevent a challenge to his leadership. And the vote against was 148 votes. And therefore, I can announce that the Parliamentary Party does have confidence. Yeah. Victory, but still damaging and painful. 148 of his own MPs voting no confidence in their leader. Not enough to oust Boris Johnson from number 10, but a sign his party were turning on him. The voters, too... Double defeat in by-elections in Tiverton and Wakefield. Two very different seats sending the same message. It's time to show Boris the door. The party chair, Oliver Dowden, resigned, saying someone must take responsibility. The Prime Minister still didn't think that should be him. The final straw, however, was the resignation of a man few outside Westminster had heard of from a job most wouldn't have known existed. Chris Pincher appointed in February as Deputy Chief Whip, stood down five months later after allegations of sexual harassment. But Pincher had form for this sort of behaviour, and officials had repeatedly warned the PM of such. First, Boris Johnson tried denying he knew specific details. Are you drowning in sleeves? 
After five days, the story changed and he conceded he'd simply forgotten what he'd been told. Again, questions about whether Boris Johnson was deliberately withholding the truth. Wait, is it game over, Prime Minister? Patterson, parties and now Pincher. Trust amongst his MPs was finally gone. First his Chancellor and Health Secretary resigned and then a tsunami of colleagues quit in their wake. The boy who once said he wanted to be king dethroned, a winner cast out, without the party knowing what comes next. Sam Coates, Sky News, Westminster.